Let's go for fitness and health. Miss Echo. This is bin class every free day, whatever. Why are you judging me? I didn't say anything. Anyway. <laughs> How do you stay active, physically active and healthy? Do you have a fitness routine that you swear by? Chasing you around the house. <laughs> No, sometimes I chase Sabian. <laughs> yeah, she does. <laughs> In the garden. No, walking. I love walking. I love walking. Um, and it's really important. I tried... To, well, now you're doing it, but I've got to get back in. I just do... 30 to 40 minutes a day of walking. Mm. Um, that's really important. That's good for my mental state. And then gym. I really just want to do gym three times a week. Yeah. And swimming minimum once i used to do i used to do it twice but once with gym three times a week is good for me it's good just getting in the pool um so my routine is very much keeping fit but most of it right now is walking mm. walking and the bike getting the bike out Absolutely. that was fun um back on my bike i am so and i was so out of breath <laughs> <laughs> can we insert clips <laughs> I was so out of breath. That but hill was steep. Again, it's consistency. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you're consistently doing and when you are consistent, you just improve and get better. Yeah. I used to love pool day, which is um, back and biceps. I think you were like, pool day makes your back look really good. Oh. Muscly. Oh, you're going back to the gym? I'll let you know how we get on. Yeah. Hopefully next next video there'll be videos of the gym. What are you doing? <laughs> um next embracing change. How do you handle major life changes? Can you share a recent example where you successfully navigated a big shift? Um, a big shift I would say recently is failed relationships having a massive impact and still having to go heartbreak is serious this is the striving butterfly podcast And heartbreak at an older age is even more serious. Like, what is going on? Like, hello? Um, and how did I get through it? Is very much my faith and my network. Uh, I got some key people that just pop, 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 kept poking and podding and checking. Are you okay? Are you okay? What are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And different friends from different networks so they give you a different perspective and a different view and yourself like it's so motivating you get on my damn nerves being back home because you're so messy but you motivate me you motivate me to still see what the purpose is in life um you motivate me to know you you may not realize that I'm so proud of you. So proud of you getting through uni because uni is not easy. As you know, I've studied more than once, more than twice, more than three times. <laughs> um, so having a degree and getting it behind you and just starting again and getting out and everyone's like, are you got a job yet? Are you working yet? Where are you working? What are you doing? And you're like, I can you it. give me a break? Yes. So I'm proud of you being strong enough to come back home to like just start again leave your life in manchester and come back to london uk or well, you in the uk anyway <laughs> but come back down to surrey and start again like it's massive it's huge so 
that's a drive for me. That's a drive for me to make sure that, you know, let me support you because I know exactly what it's like and it wasn't easy. So let me support you through that transition. And without you realizing you being here, you've supported me through my transition. So we are, you know, gaining strength from each other without even realizing. Mm. You know, so that's a huge motivation. Mum and dad, my mum and dad are a huge motivation. They frustrate the <laughs> life out of me. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's so motivating to see my parents proud of what I've done. And even though I'm like, I don't feel I'm at the point yet where I want my parents to be like, yeah, she's made it. <laughs> um, I'm still working to be like, yeah. But I know they're proud at how far I come. So it motivates me to just keep going for them. Mm. Yeah, you having to deal with all my late night calls of, Mom, I don't know what I'm doing. Why am I doing this? I should just drop out. That was first year. Second year was, Mom, I don't know what I'm doing. Why did I do this? Why? <laughs> Third year was, Mom, I've written this essay and it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Yeah, 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 and driving to Manchester to rewrite it. <laughs> yeah, literally, <laughs> that was planned with like one night. <laughs> you read the essay, was like, yeah, I'm coming down. <laughs> uh, but you'd be surprised though, because I didn't realize I was gonna be um, helping you so much through uni. But I think it's. We have a good relationship anyway. Yeah. Uni definitely but expanded I, that. Though. Yeah, yeah. I think it really strengthened it. And um, to see different dynamics mm. of how we can support and help each other. Yeah. Uh, and we had some good laughs. Um, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And every time you came, you bought something new. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to the questions. <laughs> Next question inspirational books outside of the bible can you recommend a book that has profoundly influenced your perspective on life or self-improvement and then a fiction book that you just love (laughs) (laughs) um dare to lead by brene brown do you have it here yeah might be good to show it is it a recent read or is it a recent read? Is that my book? Surrounded by Idiots? Yeah, that's your book. <laughs> so this one, really, really good book. Um, it's just where I am right now. Um, I go back to it and reference it. It's all about leading, mm. how to lead, um, how to bring out the best in yourself um, in group settings, in small settings. You know, I, I want to do speaking engagements. And mm. so really, really good book. Um, and you want me to be quite honest um, another I really 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 loved um, Becoming by Michelle Obama that was just it's hiding right now that's why she's not getting it it's long to move it's hiding just there Um, I just love reading as you know I love absolutely love reading so I've got books galore Um, my different versions of the bible (laughs) um my women's bible is uh, i love it absolutely i did, I did say it outside of the bible oh well okay outside of the bible yeah a non-fictional book um um i would have to say oh, i used to love love roald Dahl books yeah love roald Dahl. bibliography i'd go for becoming um, or I would do um, Finding Me. Yeah. Um, those two were really, really good. Um, my childhood was Roald Dahl and also um, The Magic Faraway Tree. Absolutely loved that book. That book is a good book. I only know that book because she used to read it to me every night. It's so big, it's like that big, is it, and there's stories. Yeah. It did, it does ignite imagination, hundred percent. That's a book for every child that should read. Yes, if if mm. like we lost, like everything's digital, so no one writes. Yeah, there's no real creativity. Like mm. 
getting lost, getting lost in a really, really good book and thinking, imagine if that was me in the book, just running and running and running down the alley, you yeah. know? And there's all these trees and bushes and everything. And then I appear and there's this amazing white castle with food just dripping off it. <laughs> Why do you remember it so well? Um, so, yeah, that would be me. I could go on. But those books come to mind. Yeah. I, think that, I think that's a good collection. Yeah. Should, we, should we also qu- quickly do movies? Because I don't know, this isn't, if I don't know if they can see it, but right here there's a very, very, very minuscule amount of movies here. Yet in the attic there is most probably two full, big, clear boxes of just DVDs, which I was most probably way too young to read some of them, watch some of them, but my mum was out at work. Those were the best things to watch so let's do two mo- of your favorite movies oh Greece. no you can't do you can't do two okay. <laughs> all right do three 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 goonies I absolutely love the goonies yeah i absolutely love um ah uh, grease dirty dancing yeah. pretty woman you've, you've gone over three mum well you <laughs> you just can't and then i've got my whole catalogue yeah. Um, brown sugar, um, like breaking, absolutely love it. Yeah. Mannequin, absolutely love all right, it. All right, all right, let's let's you know. stop there. <laughs> and last one. Ah, oh, the long kiss goodnight. Amazing, Samuel L. Jackson. Amazing, amazing, amazing. You done? One yeah. more. Three best albums. Nope, can't do it. <laughs> there's no free best albums i anyone who knows me will know i listen to music every day all day music is playing all the time um i listen to an array of genres right now you're you you have not repeat the tiny desk the fox is it is that what they're called the locks yeah on repeat that's what i've heard um yeah that was a good one that was a good one um but no albums is not albums i've got there's some so many good arties if you're from the 80s and the 90s oh my gosh like black street jodeci cut close escape swv h-town mint condition okay okay i get the point mom Okay, I get the point. From N Sing, oh, okay. Christina all right. Aguilera. All right, all right. Oh my gosh, see TLC. Oh my god. Mike Check. What? <laughs> you we in the hands. This oh is my god. this is what I have to deal with, guys. Yeah. I couldn't so. do a favourite book. I I'm currently obsessed with my Kindle I got for my last birthday. Yes. Yeah. And some of those books did I on get that for you? Yeah, you did. You got that one for me with the with the air fryer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, some of those books aren't exactly PG, so I won't name those. Um, I don't even know what that means, but... Okay. <laughs> You're like reading like a Mills and Boons. <laughs> what the hell is Mills and Boons? <laughs> what the hell is that? I don't know what that one is. I've never heard of that one. Is that a term or is that actually like a book? It's a book. Okay, no, I don't know that book. Um, I'm currently reading a book that is like fairy tales so like like um it's not it's like werewolves and vampires you know i've always loved that sort of foolishness she calls it um no i like vampires i like those programs yeah as for movies oh i don't think i could even try twilight yeah i was thinking twilight twilight um yeah twilight's always been a classic for me or Disney or any any Disney movie. Right now I'm a, I'm addicted to Lilo and Stitch. <laughs> Don't know why. <laughs> and I couldn't go for albums. Um but I definitely number top one would have to be Journals Justin Bieber. Of course. Any Justin Bieber album. Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> Anything Justin Bieber. <laughs> She's so tired of it, guys. Um, let's go for financial discipline. Oh, mm. 
interesting. How do, how do you practice financial discipline? Are there any money management tips you found particularly helpful? And this is a separate one. What do you find incredibly hard to not buy? Um, so incredibly hard. You said that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think that ties into self discipline. <laughs> Are you talking about the sweets? Yes. <laughs> Constantly on a diet, on a diet. <laughs> and it's, and you don't even have one in here. You're so lucky. <laughs> There's a box there. It's these boxes from where is it? What's it called again? Being home bargains. home bargains. And it's strawberry laces. She's had the same addiction since I was probably born. Yeah. I but I wasn't actually talking about laces. I was just saying in general, what is something that you find hard to not buy? Like for me, it's constantly looking at music equipment and wanting to buy stuff that I don't need but want. Okay, okay. So me, okay. First of all, um, managing money, mm -hmm. like I'm whack. Respect the honesty. Um, I'm better. I I don't know if your dad would say that, <laughs> but um, no, I'm better. I think I came very much from the bottom up in my career. So I came like starting out. Remember, I finished uni. Mm -hmm. You was three, three at the time, yeah. so you still in three when I. So you still needed support. All the after school clubs, everything. So money was gone dead dry up like once you paid for your bills everything is gone so over the years as my career has grown and strengthened and my salary has changed and my jobs have changed there's a little bit more uh, expenditure that's been available so when i became disciplined and planned towards the house stopped taking trips became mm. very disciplined um stopped certain luxuries but one thing that i have been doing for years before i even thought about buying the house is a spreadsheet and it's just in excel and i load it up into the cloud and i literally just track every single item that hits my account now there's a really really good app called emma really really good financial app is similar um where it just tracks every you link all your accounts to it and it just tracks and lets you know when direct debits are going to leave your account um monzo you does know. that by the way guys. monzo does that emma's really good because it just brings everything together but most banks have it emma's quite powerful though and it's secure mm. um very very secure so i track in a spreadsheet i am able to see what i have left over it doesn't help if I get a parking ticket. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, I am a lot better than how I used to be. But being financially disciplined in this time where we have uh, economic crisis and people being underpaid and doing double, triple, doing their hustle on the side is hard because you're taking your earnings that you make from your nine to five and pouring them into your projects. Yeah. So there's nothing left. Um, you still want your luxury. So yes, I still go on holidays because um, I like those. Um, one thing that I wish just never existed was Amazon. <laughs> Yeah, I'm linked I'm to that just... account and I see everything. everything. Amazon is the enemy. <laughs> so now I just very much, um, because I study behaviours, I can I I understand how you know to get discounts for stuff. You know, she on many give many those, shops. Those informations to me apparently, but yeah. on many on many shops, I'm not. It's very very rare I'm buying something full price. Forget it. <laughs> Get it, unless it's designer because I'm just it's very hard to get a discount for Gucci or 
Louis Vuitton, yeah. and those shops. That's full whack price. <laughs> but anything else, I am definitely getting a discount on. But Amazon just needs to be out of my life. And But what I've started to do, and very honestly, for instance, I cleared all my credit cards, everything, cleared them, paid them all off. And then I removed all of them from Apple Pay. Okay. And I took them out of my wallet. Wow. Um, but Amazon, for some reason, still has them on there. Mm. It's for some reason. For some reason. Can't remove them. Um, <laughs> so discipline for me is just cutting off what I don't need and only using for emergencies. But the finer things is that I can't, outside of sweets, is a little item of clothing or technology. Like ASOS. I, I don't use ASOS like I used to. I don't. Mm. I don't. Zara. I can't go in Zara. Yeah, you can't go in Zara. I can't even go in Tesco. <laughs> I'm the worst person in the supermarket. Do you know what Zara in. was good? And this would be a good shout for people. The one near your workplace. What Zara was that? Where's near my workplace? Yeah. Oh, that's a good Zara. That's a good Zara. Was it where was the area? Uh, you're talking New Exchange. Yeah, that. If you want a good Zara, go there. Mm. Go there. They got some good, even work outfits. They have some Batsy good suits. A good Zara. I've never been. The New Battersea? I haven't been Battersea, there. Have you been to the New Battersea? Yeah, it's cool. Been there a couple of times. When did you go to New Battersea? Been there a couple of times when you was in Manchester studying. Oh, did you see this? I wanted to go to New Battersea. No, no invite. E -e, did you see? Not even. You wasn't here. You wasn't in. You wasn't in London. Oh well. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next question. Future vision. Shall I ask this question at the end? No. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask this question at the end because it links to this. Lessons from failure. Can you share an experience where you failed but gained a valuable lesson from it? How. Do you, did you shape it for current approach in life? I kind of answered this asked you this question before. Um, failure for me is not being consistent. Mm. Um, I think if I was a little for my social stuff, is you know, I plan out social for about a month, and if the weather is not going great or if I feel like I want to hibernate, I don't post, and it just throws everything out of alignment. Mm. Okay. And then I notice if I don't post, all everything that I've grown, I literally feel like I'm starting all over again. Mm. Consistency. It's hard to regain. Next question Community building. How important is community for you? What steps did you take to nurture your online and offline communities? Ah, oh, community is everything to me. And I don't think I would have realised that before. I think striving butterfly is really striving butterfly and you being at uni has really shown me about community. Also heartbreak, loss, relationships. So, you know, I have my church community. I have my friendships. And then I have my family. But I think it's really important to give everything that you're receiving. Mm. So it's really important to not just take, 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 take. Because some people really feed and pour into you mm. without you realising. And you can just be in your own world of, oh, poor me, everything's going bad for me. And just absorb, 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 absorb. And you're not giving anything back out so after a while it's like some without you realizing you could think i'm a really good friend because i'm always on the other end of the line and they're thinking oh my gosh this person just always takes 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 yeah. so community is important to give as well as receive and it is really important that you do give because then it opens up whoever it is within that network to also feel like they're comfortable and safe your community needs to feel safe and there's a few people in my network small network 
that I feel safe with meaning mm. I can tell them things and they'll take it they'll hold it they will advise they will guide and that's it no judgment I may get told off because I did something wrong and I didn't listen but it's more of just don't do that because you're not going to gain it's not going to help you mm. I'm just doing this out of love and community is important because when you've got real good community there's no jealousy there's mm. no I'm doing this for a gain. It means I'm doing this because if you win, we all win. Yeah. From the time I knuckle down to buy my house, and I think all the way up to maybe you go into uni, I don't think I really truly appreciated my community. I had really close friends and relationships but I didn't really tap into my community as best as I could have. So knowing that, learning that, seeing that now, like community is everything for me. Hmm. Next question. Dealing with self-doubt. How do you handle self-doubt or imposter syndrome, especially when you're stepping out of your comfort zone? uh this goes this is linked to community i uh, it's very much my network my people um being able to have a couple safe people to hold me accountable and when i am in doubt and unsure you know like starting the podcast for instance um i was in doubt i was unsure and it was just having friends people who would be like what are you doing why haven't you done this why haven't you started <laughs> and respecting why they are pushing me yeah yeah okay last question guys you ready i am legacy and impact what kind of a legacy do you want to leave behind how are you working towards making that impact now faith resilience empowerment i want to encourage, encourage people, people to trust believe and know there's a god and know they can lean on him resilience um that through it all you can get through it doesn't matter how life and what life throws at you um there is a purpose for your life there's a purpose for your life and even if you do not see it even if you do not know even if you're in doubt don't don't give up so i want to be able to empower and leave a legacy of empowerment where people are feeling empowered and be like oh my gosh you know what i changed my life because i heard something from the striving butterfly i received, I received something, something from, from the striving, striving butterfly. butterfly i heard, I heard Someone, someone talk, talk from, from the striving butterfly. butterfly don't know don't her name but the person, the person who, who said, said what they, they said and executed, executed left a lasting mark on my life so, so it's, it's not this striving, striving butterfly, butterfly is not about me it's, it's about me helping everyone out there to be the best version that they can I've had a, I've had not a bad life, not, I'm not like, oh my gosh, I've had a misery story, that's why I started this. No, I've had a story that's stretched me, pulled me, and really challenged me. But it challenged me to be able to be the best version of myself without doubt and appreciate all that I am because I'm not the same as anybody else. So I want everyone to know that you're not meant to be the same as somebody else. You're meant to be you. So if I can empower you to be yourself and own who you are, then that is everything. Everything. Wow. Yeah. I think that's it. We did it. We did it. Like, my first, first, first guest. Oh, no. My first guest. <laughs> you don't know why you're trying to act like it. you. Guys, mum has a fear of these flying spider looking like things. He's been in it all the time. And now one has entered the room. It's been in there the whole time we've been recording. You're lying. I've been watching it. It just sat on the door. 
it sat on the door the whole time. Yeah. You didn't want to panic me, did you? No, I didn't, because we had to get to the end. So what's the plan? <laughs> right now. <laughs> there's a fly in the room. You know those dragonflies? <sighs> just a dragonfly. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but yeah, we did it. But... Nice one. We got to the very first episode where I have a host, and my co-host is Kyla, um, my mini me. And I'll be so keen to know what your thoughts are on my guest co-host. I'm sure she's going to be coming back to ask me some more questions and maybe sit down and have a conversation that is somewhat different and share with us how her journey is going. If this is your first time listening to A Shriving Butterfly, I would encourage you to go back to all the other episodes and listen, get up to speed. Why are we here? Let, let, let me ask one more question as well. Oh, no. This isn't for you. Oh, you want to answer a question? No, no, I'm asking them a question. Oh, go, go, go. You can ask me a question if you've got a question. You got one? Yeah. Okay. What, what did you take from this? Mm. I've got two questions. You've got two? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, nurturing community. Nurturing community. Yeah, I'd say that's what I took from it. Because, oh, Jesus. No! Wait. Just wait. Just wait. <laughs> I don't know if Mommy just included this or not. But the <laughs> flying thing came towards us. <laughs> yeah, I hear it. But it flew somewhere now we don't know where it is. So she's in panic mode. But I was saying, yeah, um community uh nurturing your community because i can tend to, to be quite isolating of people and forget what's in, if it, they're not right in front of me so i say i need to work on that and appreciate who i do have and what are your thoughts on a uh, striving butterfly because there's a lot that i brought that no one knew no, yeah. including yourself um, well, I, I'm not really prepared for that question. I'll say that Striving Butterfly is a, it's, a pro, it's progressing, it's becoming its own identity. And what, why, why did you look behind my head? Is it behind my head? No. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's becoming its own identity and it's got a long way to go, 100%, but I'm proud of you for bringing it as far as, as you have so far. It, it just started off as this little group chat and a couple messages and one logo, was it two? And then she was like, pick the logo. I don't know what logo to pick. pick, pick the logo. And now you're looking at a new logo and you're, like, every day it's like, okay, I'm just gonna be on my iPad and I'm typing, typing, you got, do they know, do they know about the no, okay, I can't. Huh? Yeah, they know. They know. You sure? Okay. Well, she's currently working on her affirmation cards. I think you did mention it earlier, actually. Mm -hmm. That is taking up a lot of her time. She has a whole book. Yeah, it's not even here anymore. But a book with different types of cards, which I didn't even know was a thing. Um, but yeah, I couldn't be more proud of where it's becoming, and I've even shared it with a couple of my own friends. And they've taken their own experience from it. I think from the first episode, it was something different. Because though I couldn't exactly experience what you went through, there's parts of it that I have gone through myself. And I was able to take that part away from it. And it helped me understand no one is ever alone. Even your own parents, you never know what they've gone through. You never know what happened before you or what sort of things they don't tell you and what you can learn from that yourself and what path you could have gone on if it wasn't for what they've gone through and what their parents went through. So, yeah. Will you come back? Yeah, I'll come back. If all the lighting's this good. And you're going to share your story? Uh, yeah, give me like two years. No. No? Okay. No. No? No? Okay. So maybe I do my own little episode. Just by myself. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, you guys have to say if whether you'd like that or not. That would be very, very, very opening of me. Yeah. But I do have Hold a question. Hold accountable, guys. <laughs> I do have a question for I you guys. Question. For them. Oh, for yes, them, you I did. Answer you it. did, you did. What would you like to see more from my mother? What's a video you would like her to talk about? What's a topic that you think is not mentioned enough? And it doesn't have to be Bible related. It could just be about life or it could be Bible related. And she could do an episode on three of her favorite books from the Bible. I don't know. But definitely put in the comments, what would you like to see? And subscribe, I guess. There was this poke, poke, I don't do all of this stuff. I just say subscribe guys. Yeah. But no, thank you, thank you, thank you, Kyla. Thank you. My first guest. Um, we crammed into my small, small, small office and we made it happen. Hot. Um, we've gone through all sorts in this period of time that we have recorded. What did you see it? Good <laughs> <laughs> question. Um, do you have an, have you done a topic on like, like conversation with men? What do you mean conversation with men? Like, answer men questions outside of it and bring it inside? Do you think maybe they'd like to see that? You can ask oh, and they so can, they can comment. comment. Do you guys want an episode with a gentleman? What, male what? perspective? Yeah, yeah. Shrive and Butterfly male perspective. Or mm. questions women can ask men to understand more. Or a perspective men can bring to women that they may need to understand more of. Mm. It's not just a women's podcast, guys. Right? It is not just a women's podcast, but it's very much geared towards women, but meaning that guests can be male or female and perspectives can be male or female. Yeah. So, that's just one more thing. And who's the next guest? Well, let's see. Let's see. And just to let you know, so this has been one year, a lot has happened and a lot of things are coming. We've launched a new lo logo um i say, I say we. we i've, I've launched, launched a new a logo, logo. Um, um that you will see and there is also a whatsapp community that i have set up and it's very much closed, closed community, community group, group where you can have authentic people. conversations with like-minded people and ask questions i'm building this community so women can come together talk share empower and just build up so they know that they're not alone you can have friends, but sometimes you want someone else's perspective. And this is what this community is for, to help you in a time of need. And until next time, stay focused, stay encouraged, stay striving, and stay tuned for the next episode of A Striving Butterfly. Peace. <laughs> wait, wait, see me. Oh, gosh. Peace out, guys. Bye. Yeah, Sabian has been here all the time. He's been pretty good. He's been a good. No barking. Did you eat? He never barks. Did you eat the fly? <laughs> Did you eat it? <laughs> Say bye, Sabian. Bye. <laughs>